The U-2 Dragon Lady mission on July 31, 2025, marked a historic milestone in aviation history, celebrating the 70th anniversary of the aircraft's first flight in 1955. This mission was more than symbolic, it was a deeply technical, performance-intensive, and meticulously planned demonstration of the U-2's unmatched endurance, high-altitude capabilities, and adaptability across generations of technology and warfare doctrine. The flight originated and concluded at Beale Air Force Base, the long-standing home of the U-2 fleet and the 9th Reconnaissance Wing. The selected aircraft for this anniversary mission was a TU-2S, the two-seat trainer variant of the U-2. Unlike operational single-seat reconnaissance missions, this aircraft allows for joint piloting or instructional operations. For the purposes of the July 2025 mission, this configuration likely provided operational flexibility, safety redundancy, and technical oversight during flight. According to publicly available logistics and maintenance trends, the TU-2S fleet is maintained at a comparable readiness level to the single-seat variants, with nearly identical avionics and performance characteristics when optimized for long-range endurance flights. The U-2 took off in the early hours of the day, outfitted for a continuous, non-refueled flight intended to circle the entire lower 48 states of the United States. The mission spanned more than 6,100 nautical miles, traversing diverse flight zones, meteorological patterns, and air traffic corridors. Flying at operational altitudes exceeding 70,000 feet, the U-2 remains beyond the reach of most conventional aircraft and many surface-based detection and engagement systems. The mission profile included altitude modulation, path corrections, and real-time navigation based on regional weather updates, controlled from mission command at Beale AFB and reinforced through distributed tracking. Throughout the 14-hour mission, the pilot had to manage numerous physiological and technical factors. The U-2 cockpit, while pressurized, offers very limited space, and requires the pilot to wear a full-body pressure suit similar to those used in space operations. These suits are necessary to protect the pilot from hypoxia and decompression sickness in the thin air at extreme altitudes. For hydration and nutrition, pilots use specialized feeding tubes integrated into their helmets. The strain of flying in such conditions for more than half a day is substantial and underscores the physical resilience and extensive training of U-2 crews. The aircraft reportedly attempted a zoom climb near the end of the flight, a maneuver in which the aircraft accelerates in level flight and then pulls sharply upward to reach a transient maximum altitude. While the exact figures of this maneuver were not released, and the climb did not result in a new altitude record, it validated the airframe's structural integrity and thrust efficiency even after decades of service. Zoom climbs are physically demanding on both the aircraft and pilot, and executing such a maneuver after an ultra-long endurance flight further demonstrated operational robustness. Ground support for this mission involved over a dozen specialized teams, including mission planning, logistics coordination, maintenance, weather forecasting, airspace deconfliction, ground recovery, and pilot health monitoring. The Physiological Support Division PSD, played a key role in preparing the pilot, monitoring pre-flight medical metrics, and ensuring that emergency equipment was properly configured for high-altitude contingencies. This commemorative mission did not occur in a vacuum. It took place during a pivotal period for the U-2 program. By mid-2025, the Air Force had confirmed plans to retire the U-2 fleet by the end of fiscal year 2026, with flight operations expected to conclude as early as September 2025. However, congressional mandates placed constraints on this timeline, requiring detailed justification for every aircraft removed from service. Specifically, appropriations legislation stated that no more than eight U-2 airframes could be retired in a single fiscal year without additional oversight. These measures reflect concerns that alternative ISR platforms, including next-generation satellites and unmanned systems, may not yet fully match the U-2's flexibility, reliability, and effectiveness in contested or unpredictable environments. The U-2's continued relevance comes in part from its integration into modern battle networks. It has served as a live demonstration platform for Advanced Battle Management System ABMS, experimentation, acting as a high-altitude, near-space sensor and data relay node. The aircraft's broad-spectrum communications capability allows it to interact with satellites, aircraft, and ground stations simultaneously, relaying battlefield intelligence, enabling data fusion, and acting as a resilient command and control bridge in GPS-denied or communications-degraded environments. From a hardware standpoint, the U-2 platform has received continuous upgrades. These include synthetic aperture radar, electro-optical sensors, 
signals intelligence payloads, and open mission systems architecture that allow for rapid software modifications. Over its lifetime, nearly every sensor and computing platform integrated into U.S. Airborne ISR has been tested or flown aboard the U-2. These upgrades are often invisible externally but are core to the aircraft's continued operational value. The July 2025 flight also served as a living tribute to seven decades of service by thousands of men and women, not just pilots, but engineers, planners, maintainers, intelligence analysts, and contractors. The culture surrounding the U-2 program is unique within the Air Force. Pilots are trained under a demanding and selective process, and the aircraft's unforgiving flight characteristics require constant precision and discipline. Maintenance crews treat the platform as a blend of legacy airframe and modern reconnaissance hub, balancing vintage structural upkeep with cutting-edge sensor integration. By August 2, 2025, the Air Force had not announced any changes to the retirement schedule. However, mission reports from Dragon 70 and internal assessments could influence final decisions, especially if certain capabilities, such as rapid deployment, high-altitude loitering, and flexible sensor integration, are shown to be operationally irreplaceable in the short term. The U-2's legacy is not defined solely by how long it flew, but by what it made possible, from photographing missile sites during Cold War standoffs, to identifying insurgent movements, to testing the digital infrastructure of future warfare. The July, 31, 2025 flight captured that entire legacy in a single, sweeping gesture, an aircraft born in secrecy and strategy, still proving its worth 70 years later, flying above every corner of its home nation, and reminding the world that innovation and endurance are not always bound by age.